Today, I'm gonna walk you through my process of character creation. I will explain it on a basic level so that any person could understand it. And even if you don't understand what I say, you will definitely feel what you see. Does it make any sense? Who are you? Don't you remember the first rule of Fight Club? If you are curious, then this is the right place. So the other day, I was watching a tutorial by Southern Shorty where he shares various useful modeling techniques with an example where he creates a cute character which is stationary. What I mean by stationary is that we can't animate the model itself cause it's modeled like a still showpiece with loose parts whose nature is just to be looked at. Ever since I began learning 3D art, I always wanted to be able to create characters that I saw in 3D animated movies. But there's a whole team of artists that designs a character for a movie. So the question is, will I be able to model a believable character all by myself? Well, let's see. Firstly, let's open Blender. Before I begin, I want you to know that anything that's represented in 3D and CGI is made using basic shapes and polygons. When edited and arranged effectively, the resulting geometry is a real looking object or a character. Not only does it look real, but it can also be made to function like a real-life machine or a creature. Now to model a character, we need to design it first, which means having a basic idea of how our character is gonna look like. So the character design I had in my mind was, cause I couldn't draw, therefore I created a face inspired from the tutorial I was watching at the beginning, which brings us straight to the part where I model the character. To make a well-functioning character, I need to make sure that the body I model is made using equal sized faces or quadrants, which results in uniform deformation. I blocked out the overall character with basic shapes, then added geometry to shape its body parts like hands, feet and neck. Later I duplicated few polygons in the upper body and shaped it to look like a shirt. Same way for the trousers. I also modeled shoes by simply subdividing a cube and extruding bunch of faces. What do you think happens when a character that you see folds its arm or its body parts? The underlying polygons change its shape according to the movement, hence the term edge flow, which refers to the flow of polygons around the areas that fold or change shape. Having a good edge flow results in real looking animation. Oh, I need to work on his butt. Okay, so I shaped his cute little butt. It isn't anatomically accurate, but the belly and the butt make a perfect balance. Mouth and eyes are crucial parts when it comes to modeling a character. And I didn't even have a specific reference. So I took a look at my own face and applied it on the character. Further, I added hair particles to the crazy shapes you see on his head. And now we texture our character, which means coloring it in an advanced way, which you would never understand. It's so complicated that if you consider our 3D model as a paper mesh, tear it apart, lay it down, do a little bit of painting. You can also do it in a better way and throw it back. We get a skin texture. By the way, the method is called UV mapping. Next, I assigned basic materials to the clothes, eyes and shoes. Told you, you won't understand it. And here comes the part where we give our character the ability to stand and live his own life. It's called rigging, which refers to adding bones and controls to the body to further animate it. I created a skeleton according to the proportions of our character. Selected all the objects in the scene and parented it to the armature. And it's time to test our rig. Wait, what? His pants are tearing apart as you move his bones. I can see that. I have to weight paint my character, which means manually assigning parts or vertices of my model to its corresponding bones. Previously, I did it automatically, which caused errors. Okay, so now the rig seems to be working perfectly fine, which means we can animate our character. 
Now below here is the timeline. If I play through it, we can see our animation in real time. But I haven't given any motion to the character yet. Well, here's how it's done. I will select a bone, add a keyframe for rotation, move few frames forward, rotate the bone and again add a keyframe for rotation. Now if I come back to the starting frame and hit play, we get a motion. Do it to all the bones and we bring our character to life. <laughs>